Hey guys, we're Commander here, and in this video, we're going to derive the mean of the log normal distribution by making use of our knowledge of the normal distribution. If we have a random variable x, where x follows the normal distribution with a mean mu and a variance sigma squared, then the probability density function of x, which is given by f of x, is equal to 1 over the square root of 2 pi sigma squared times e to the negative x minus mu squared over 2 sigma squared. And this is valid for a support where x is less than infinity and greater than negative infinity. So this is a, just a reminder on the normal distribution. If you need some further insights into the normal distribution, please refer to the videos linked in the right-hand corner. So the log normal distribution. If we let a random variable y be equal to e to the power of x, where x follows the normal distribution with mean mu and variance sigma squared, then we say that y follows the log normal distribution with parameters mu and sigma squared. Note that this mu is not the mean of y, this is the mean of x. So our question that we want to answer here is, what is the expected value of y? And the expected value of y is going to be the same as the expected value of e to the power of x. And we know from our knowledge on continuous distributions that the expected value of e to the x is simply the integral over your support of e to the x times f of x dx. And if we use on our, our probability density function that's up here, we will find that that is the integral from negative infinity to positive infinity of e to the x times 1 over the square root of 2 pi sigma squared e to the negative x minus mu squared over 2 sigma squared dx. Don't forget the dx because that can always catch you if you're in a test or a, a, an exam. So we have written this down now. Now note that we have e to the x over here and we have another e to the sum function of x on the right hand side here. So let's forget, forget about everything else for the time being and just focus on these two. So we have the product of the e to the functions of x end up being e to the x over 1 minus x minus mu to the power sigma squared over 2 sigma squared. Now let's get these two fractions into a single one. So ignore the e to the power of whatever for the time being, just focus on this. So what we can do, we can do our little bow tie here and we get 2 sigma squared x minus x minus mu squared over 2 sigma squared. Now this is the functions of x's. Let's expand this, the brackets over here, and we find that this yields 2 sigma squared x minus x squared minus 2 mu x plus mu squared over 2 sigma squared. Now let's go do a bit of simplification. And as we go on now, we're going to ignore this part for the time being. The denominator we'll ignore and we'll just focus on the numerator. We are just interested in the x's and the functions of x in the top here. So what we find is we expand the, this bracket by multiplying the minus in, we get negative x squared plus 2 mu x minus mu squared plus 2 sigma squared x. Now let's write this as a quadratic function of the form ax squared plus bx plus c. We see that we have negative 1 times x squared plus 2 times mu plus sigma squared times x 
and then we lastly we're left with negative mu squared. So what do we see here? We see A is equal to minus 1, B is equal to 2 times mu plus sigma squared, and C is equal to negative mu squared. And now we're going to plug it into a formula that you might have seen, the quadratic formula. Y is equal to A times X plus B over 2A squared plus 4AC minus B squared over 4A. So we're going to write this quadratic function into this form over here. And the purpose for that is because this will allow us to rewrite this integral, this expectation. We can rewrite this in a form that we can simplify. So let's do exactly that. We've already found, written down that A is minus 1. B is 2 times mu plus sigma squared, and C is equal to negative mu squared. We are writing that y is equal to negative x plus b. B is 2 times mu plus sigma squared. A is equal to minus 1, so we have 2 times negative 1 as the denominator, squared plus 4a c minus b squared over 4a. So we've plugged in the numbers, we've been careful, and if you write your things neatly, then things should go relatively smooth. So this then further simplifies to negative x minus, these cancel out, 2 over 2, then we're left with negative mu plus sigma squared, squared. Then we have this whole fraction here on the right hand side. So we end up getting negative 4 times negative mu squared. That leaves us with positive 4 mu squared minus 4 times, let's expand this bracket here, we square it, we get mu squared plus 2 mu sigma squared plus sigma to the power of 4. And all of this divided by negative 4. So as we go on, let's simplify the numerator. We see we end up with 4 mu squared, negative 4 mu squared, negative 8 mu sigma squared, and negative 4 sigma to the power of 4. All of this divided by negative 4. These two cancel out, lovely. Negative 8 mu sigma squared over negative 4. We're left over with 2 mu sigma squared. Negative 4 over negative 4, we're left with plus 1. So we have 2 mu sigma squared plus sigma to the power of 4. So this whole function simplifies to y is equal to negative x minus mu plus sigma squared squared plus 2 mu sigma squared plus sigma to the power of 4. Now note here that this y is simply, we're simply using this formula here. We're not referring to any particular function except for the function of x that we have gone and rewritten in this form. So let's go all the way back to where we last had a denominator and this was over here, 2 sigma squared. So let's bring that back over here. We divide all of this by 2 sigma squared. So let's write that again. And as a reminder, we started over here with e to the x multiplied by e to the negative x minus mu squared over 2 sigma squared. We rewrote this into this form using this quadratic formula over here. And then we find that we could simplify it to this. And there's still some further simplification that we can do. We find that this is e to the negative x minus mu plus sigma squared squared over 2 sigma squared. And let's factor out this part to 
because this has got nothing to do with x. So multiplied by e to the 2 mu sigma squared plus sigma to the power 4 divided by 2 sigma squared, which you can further simplify because we still have 2s here and we've got sigma squared. So this simplifies to 2 over 2, that leaves you with 1 mu, the sigma squared and the sigma squared cancel, plus sigma to the power 4 over 2 sigma squared, that leaves us with sigma squared over 2. So we have some function of x multiplied by e to the mu plus sigma squared over 2, which are constants with respect to x. So we've found this. Now let's go and rewrite our integral. So we have this segment over here. So we have this that we've calculated and simplified, and we'll bring it back all the way at the top over here. The expected value of y is equal to the integral from negative infinity to positive infinity of 1 over square root 2 pi sigma squared times by e to the negative x minus mu plus sigma squared from down here squared over 2 sigma squared multiplied by e to the mu plus sigma squared over 2 dx. And since this part is independent of x, we can factor it outside, bring it outside of the integral. So we find that the expected value of y is equal to e to the mu plus sigma squared over 2 multiplied by the integral from negative infinity to positive infinity of 1 over square root 2 pi sigma squared e to the negative x minus mu plus sigma squared squared over 2 sigma squared dx. Now, wonderful, we've gotten here, we've got some integral on the right hand side, we've got a constant outside of the integral. Let's examine this integral and see if there's something that we can pick out from it. If you look at this integral and you examine in particular this part over here, we have x minus mu plus sigma squared. Well, doesn't this look familiar? If you look at the probability density function on the left-hand side here, you see that we have it in the form where e to the negative x minus the mean mu squared over 2 sigma squared. So what if we just made mu nu, mu nu equal to mu plus sigma squared? Then we will see that this integral is simply the integral of a PDF over the entire support of the PDF of a normal distributed random variable with a new mean, mu nu, and the same variance as our original random variable x. And mu nu is simply equal to mu plus sigma squared. So we have e to the negative x minus mu nu squared over 2 sigma squared. And because of that reason, we are just integrating over the entire support of a normally distributed random variable with the mean mu, nu, and sigma squared. And we know that the integral over the entire support of the probability density function of a normally distributed random variable is equal to 1. So we're integrating over the entire support of the normal distribution with mu nu and sigma squared, and the function that we're integrating is the PDF. So just a reminder, an integral over the entire support of your random variable should equal to 1. Then if our integral evaluates to 1, that means that e, the expected value of y, is equal to 
e to the mu plus sigma squared over 2. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope it's been helpful to your understanding of the log normal distribution. Boer Commander out.